Hi, I'm Tony Gondola with the New Mexico Museum of Space History. I'm here to bring you the next installment in our Astronomy Club series. Enjoy! You've all seen beautiful images of the night sky taken through large telescopes, and no doubt they are astounding. As a beginner, you might think that any kind of astrophotography is out of reach. Actually, nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is, stunning pictures of the night sky can be taken with nothing more than an average camera. Creating star trail images is a great way to get your feet wet in astrophotography, and it's easier than you think. First, let's talk about the equipment you'll need. Any camera will do as long as it has the ability to be used manually and in bulb mode. This is simply the ability to leave the shutter open for a long period of time, sometimes hours. This was a common setting in older film cameras, but you might have to hunt around in the settings menu on the more modern digital cameras. If you're using an older film camera, then a shutter release cable with a lock will do the trick. For a modern digital camera, you'll need a remote trigger that supports bulb mode. You'll also need to be able to set the focus manually. For this type of photography, autofocus is not your friend. The second item that will be helpful is a way to keep the camera steady for the entire length of the exposure. A tripod would be best as it will give you the most flexibility to set up your shots, but if you don't have one, you can use a simple camera clamp or even just place the camera on a solid surface for the exposure. No matter how you do it, the camera must remain rock steady while the shutter is open. Now set up your shot. Keep in mind that the shape of the star trails will vary depending on the direction the camera is pointed. Images taken of the northern sky will show the trails as complete circles as the Earth's point of rotation is in that direction. In the southern hemisphere, you'll get the same effect by aiming the camera south. East or west will result in trails that are almost straight. Another consideration is the foreground. With exposures this long, it will not be black, so be creative and make this an integral part of your scene. Also consider the moon. Generally you want to avoid strong moonlight as it will tend to wash out the trails. On the other hand, doing a trail of the darker portions of a lunar eclipse can make for a fascinating result, so don't be afraid to experiment. That said, the darker your skies the better, so get away from those bright city lights if you can. Now that you know the basics, let's make some shots. Everything is easier in daylight, so I would recommend setting up the shot before the sun sets. Compose your image considering the direction and foreground. If there are local sources of light, such as passing cars, a lens hood, even if it's just made of black construction paper, would be helpful in keeping stray light out of the lens. Manually set your focus to infinity and make sure your battery is fully charged. Once you are set, turn the camera off to conserve power. If you're planning a very long exposure of several hours, you'll need to run the camera from a power adapter if it's digital. Also a word on settings. In most cases, you'll keep the lens wide open. That means the lowest number in your f-stop range. The best ISO setting really depends on your camera and lens combination, so feel free to experiment. A good starting point would be ISO 400. Once it's fully dark, at least 45 minutes after sunset, open the shutter, being careful not to shake the camera. Remember, you're in bulb mode, so the shutter will stay open until you press it again. Anything that happens in between will be seen by the camera. Now wait for the exposure to build up. Remember that a short exposure time of, say, 10 minutes will record short trails. The longer you go, the longer the trails will be. If you've done everything right, you'll get a good result with clear, colorful trails. If your picture is too light or too dark, adjust your ISO and or your aperture and try again. Everyone's conditions are different, so it might take a few exposures to find the optimum settings for your setup. Once you've mastered the basic technique, there are a few more things to try. The first is painting with light. While the shutter is open, you can illuminate foreground objects, even yourself, with a flashlight or flash if you want them to be part of the final composition. Aside from the lunar eclipse mentioned before, you can also capture meteors. You may even capture one or two unintentionally. They will show up as straight streaks on your final image. You can intentionally do this by pointing the camera in the direction of the radiant of a known shower and capture many more. If you shoot just after sunset or just before sunrise, you'll also have a good chance of imaging a satellite as it crosses through your image. Capturing the International Space Station on one of its passes can be a great subject to record. The bottom line is feel free to experiment. 
other than not removing the lens cap, there's not a lot of rules in this kind of photography. You might just come up with something new, so get out there and have fun. You'll not only be creating unusual and beautiful images, but you'll be learning basic skills that will be useful if you ever decide to try more advanced night sky imaging.